Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Whilst it's still early 2024, I thought it would be a really fun video to share with you all my wish list for this year of luxury goods and handbags that I have on my radar. Drawing on inspiration from last year, I'm taking into account the versatility, craftsmanship and overall the value these pieces would bring to me as an investment. And then of course, I'll be weighing up on the cost as well, as that will influence my decision on potential purchases for this year. With any substantial purchases that involves parting away with your hard-earned money, it's important that the purchase is meaningful to you, where you'll hopefully get a lot of use out of that item, and more importantly, sparks that joy in you, making that purchase worthwhile that you will cherish and go back to time and time again. That's pretty much my mindset going into this wish list for this year and the idea is it should guide me to think about what's going to make me happy in the long term and what's going to lead to a curated collection that will keep me happy for years to come. I'm looking forward to my wish list helping me maintain that thoughtfulness and mindfulness in my purchases that I want to carry over into 2024 and I'm also looking forward to it helping me work out if that luxury item I've been thinking about is something that I really want and would actually fill a gap that I have in my luxury goods collection. It will also be interesting to see over the course of this year if my mind changes about these items and whether I still feel the same about them as the months go on. So, with my wish list, I've managed to narrow it down to 10 items from 10 different brands, ranging from mainstream luxury brands to those in the mid-tier and premium luxury end. As we delve into my wish list, I invite you all to join in with your comments, let me know your thoughts, I would love to know if these brands are also of your interest. Without further ado, let's kick off with the first item on my 2024 wish list of luxury goods and handbags. So let's start off with some accessories from Saint Laurent, in particular their belts. In the past, I've been a huge fan of the accessories from Saint Laurent since the time when Hedy Slimane was creative director. I've owned their long continental wallet, which they continue to sell, and I have a croc patterned document holder that is still one of my favourite pieces to this day that I use as a clutch. So from time to time, I do like checking out their accessories and seeing what's new. In this case, I've been thinking about two belts specifically, one in gold called the Le 66 belt in crocodile embossed leather and the other I found is a Cassandra thin belt in crocodile embossed leather in silver. I could see myself wearing both these belts during the evening although I think the gold would look best at night and the silver could take you through the daytime as well as the evening depending on your outfit. For that reason, I think that's why I'm slightly leaning more to the silver Cassandra belt and also because it is a little more understated than the gold Le 66 belt. Therefore, I might get a little more use out of the silver one. I currently do not own a designer belt, so owning one would actually fill a gap in my wardrobe. As for which one, I'm going to think about this a little more. If you own a designer belt, is it worth it? Please let me know what you think. Whilst we are on mainstream brands then, let's talk about Gucci. Although the overall style is not something I would typically lean towards, I admire how Gucci have been revisiting their archives and bringing back some of their much loved collections from the past. For example, the handbags with the bamboo handle, the Jackie bag, and now the horse bit, which has been making a big comeback as of recently. I also own a few Gucci handbags that are my vintage pieces that I still adore to this day. So I think when it's done right, a piece from Gucci would be an excellent investment. This leads me to their Dionysus line, which really speaks to me. More specifically, I'm referring to the Dionysus in Gigi Supreme Mini. There's a contemporary feel about the bag that I think will age well over time. When it comes to their monogram, I think it looks great here. I love the cool toned look and matching hardware that gives it that vintage style. Initially, I thought about getting the GG Supreme Super Mini size. However, I noticed as you go up in sizes, the hardware and accessories becomes more substantial 
and this is where I think you should really be investing in. Given the classic look of the Dionysus line, I think the collection will definitely be around for a while. For that reason, I'm going to continue to keep my eye on the GG Supreme mini bag, see if I'm ready to bite the bullet in actually purchasing it for this year. With the mainstream and popular brands out of the way with, let's talk more about affordable luxury, starting with Strathberry. My interest in the brand peaked again at the end of last year when I noticed the release of the nano version of the mosaic bag in vanilla. How cool is this? Have you also noticed the addition of the mosaic bag of silver hardware? What a simple but effective way to refresh a line. Very, very smart of the brand by changing it up with the hardware and accessories. In fact, it would not surprise me if Strathberry continued to expand the silver hardware into their other handbags for this year. When I think about white bags to add in my handbag collection, the Nano Mosaic bag in vanilla feels like it could be that piece. The price tag of £395 is not bad, considering it's handcrafted using 100% leather, making this a high-end choice. With that said, I've heard overall positive reviews of Strathberry and the recent new releases from the brand has only made me more interested in acquiring one of their handbags this year. But yeah, let's see whether this will be the year for me and Strathberry, particularly getting my hands on the Nano Mosaic bag in vanilla for 2024. In the same vein of affordable luxury, let's move on to Demillier. So I've been thinking about their Nano Montreal bag in the toffee colour. Again, my thoughts are for this year to add pieces with colour in my luxury goods collection. And I think a really nice tan shade is missing and so the Nano Montreal in toffee would be an excellent choice to fill in that gap. What's also exciting about this bag is that I noticed Demelier are offering this butter looking shade called Hay. This is not a colour I've seen from the brand. It's different from the colours they tend to normally offer, but this is a really nice neutral shade. I think it looks gorgeous and you can tell Demelier are taking that one step ahead by thinking about the summer. What I will say about the hay shade is that I do like how toned down that yellow looks, making it more wearable. And that shade of yellow complements well with the gold hardware. So with the Nano Montreal, I'm thinking of going for either the deep toffee shade or the hay colour. I am curious as to how the hay colour looks in real life, so what I'm going to do is hold out on this bag until I see the reviews for the hay colour and then I'll decide if this is a bag I'll purchase for this year. We have another affordable and understated handbag on my 2024 wish list, and that's the Caroline bag from Freya New York. All three shades for the Caroline bag look so beautiful, and if I have to pick one, it might just have to be the pecan shade. I mean, how elegant does this bag look? Also, I've not seen a lot of bags like this, so that's quite appealing to me. I like the fact that the bag has a long handle, there's no logos and the price point is fair at £209. The material is also vegan leather, which I'm already familiar with through my Telfar small shopper, so I'm going to give it a little bit longer to see how the vegan leather holds up with my Telfar before I see if the Caroline bag will be a serious purchase this year. I'm also aware of the $60 shipping fee to the UK, so that will be another cost on top to bear in mind for those interested. Even with the extra $60 on top, the Caroline bag is still an inexpensive handbag amongst all the other handbags that I have on my wish list. The other thing to consider is that the website does say the Caroline handbag is a limited edition piece because it's a collaboration with Caroline Lynn. So that's going to be food for thought if a handbag line won't be around permanently. There's clearly a number of things to sleep on, but for those reasons I've just pointed out, this is going to be a handbag I'll be watching closely on my 2024 wish list. In the same realm of affordable luxury we have next is Atelier Auguste. 
The reason I've had my eye on this brand is because of the mini Monceau bag in black with the gold hardware. Okay, a quick confession I have to make is that the one bag I regret not buying to this day is the now discontinued box bag from Celine. It was only last year did I appreciate the Celine box bag for what it was. A handbag that is understated with a classic design and to me the epitome of quiet luxury. The Mini Monceau looks chic, sophisticated and made with high-end hardware, qualities that I like in the handbag. So for £375 it sounds like a fair price. Colour-wise, I am drawn to the black version, but I may just go for the tanned one for something different, as I already own a few black handbags. I would like to see this handbag in person, so I'm going to double check if we have a major department store in London where I can do this. If not, I'll definitely be watching more reviews on the Mini Monceau first, before deciding if this handbag is what I'm going to purchase in 2024. Let's move on to another understated luxury brand that I have on my radar this year and it's Totem's T-Lock Clutch. So I have seen and held the clutch at the Liberty store here in London and I loved the aesthetics of the bag. Given the emphasis on the bag as a clutch, I can see myself enjoying and making the most of carrying it that way. Another thing I really like about the T-Lock Clutch is the size as I lean more towards small and mini handbags and I think it would fit well with my petite frame. Also, the colours look great. I don't think you can go wrong with any of the colours on offer. In particular, I like the look of the ash shade, the tanned and the milk grains, so there's quite a few options to choose from. I need to check out the bags in store one more time to help me decide which colour to go for, and that might help me make a decision on purchasing the T-Lock clutch for this year. Onto another brand on my radar, which I recently discovered, is Velextra. So there's a mini bag from one of their lines that I'm interested in, and I've seen comments from others saying that this range is an alternative to the Kelly bag from Hermes. In terms of the silhouette, I can see where some of you are coming from, but the one I am particularly interested in looks more like a modern take on the Kelly bag, and so what I have my sight on is the Iside belt bag. And I think what's really fun about the belt bag is that they offer it in a number of different colours. For something different, I'd go for the citrine yellow, or for something classic, then the Havana brown looks like a good option. So this is another one where all of the colours look great. Personally, I'm really attracted to the white one. The white feels chic and it looks like it can take you through the daytime to the night, and not just ideal for the summer, but also through the other seasons. This is a bag that I've yet to see in person, however, I was pleasantly surprised to learn that they have a boutique store here in London, so I'll be making sure to visit their boutique to check out their bags in person, to see what the buzz is about, before deciding if this is definitely going to be a bag that I'll purchase this year. Moving on, the next brand I'm going to be talking about is the one that has me excited the most, and it's Loewe. This is a brand I would absolutely love to acquire more bags from because everything I want from a luxury handbag is there, from the versatility to the quality and the craftsmanship. All of these things are what I found with my small puzzle bag that I purchased in December last year. I've been so impressed with it and more happier than I thought with owning it, so that tells me the weather handbags is a worthwhile investment. For my wish list, I initially thought about the Flamenco Small Clutch, but then I thought about their basket bags, which is another popular line. Going back to what's missing in my luxury goods collection, this is where I thought the small basket bag would actually add value to me. But then I really thought about the things I prefer in a handbag, and this is where the Raffia Pochette bag comes in. What I'm thinking is that the pochette bag will be better to take travelling with as it will be easier to pack than the basket bag. I also like the relaxed look with the style, yet there's a subtle structure to it. It's not overly big like the basket bag and you have a bit more added security with a drawstring top. 
I would also like to hear more about the experience of other people with raffia bags to understand more about what to expect with the wear and tear over time and the best ways to look after it. If it's reasonable, then the raffia pochette bag could be a strong contender for what I'm going to purchase next. At £575, it is reasonable given the alternatives I've seen from the likes of Celine, Jacques Mousse and Strathberry. So with the raffia pochette bag, I think it could be something I'll be purchasing in the near future very, very soon. Last but not least, I'm saving this as the best for last because price point wise, this is the most expensive bag in my wish list. If you guessed right from the beginning of this video that it's the small Endioma bag from Bottega Veneta, then I'm sending you a virtual high five. Like Lueve, I've come to appreciate Bottega Veneta more as of lately. In the past, the brand had never appealed to me, but as my tastes have leaned more into an understated style, I can now understand the appeal of the brand. I mean, can we take a moment to appreciate how stunning the small Andy Armour bag is in fondant? I will say the bag is gorgeous in person as it is in the images. That deep dark brown shade is going to look great, not just in the evening, but for the daytime too. I also think the fondant shade is going to carry well across all seasons, so you will definitely get a lot of wear out of this bag. What I would really be interested to find out is how well the Andiamo bag holds up after a year, just so I know what to expect with the quality. I know this bag was trending in the last few months and that's why this bag has my attention in the first place. That aside, I do like the style of the Andy Armour as it's got that timeless quality and style about it. And that signature weave that I like more than the style of weave from the cassette line. Only time will tell if this bag is the real deal. So my plan is to keep an eye out on reviews for this handbag throughout this year and see what others have to say about their experience. In the meantime, the Andy Armour is going to stay on the back burner and we'll see if this bag is meant for me in 2024. And there you have it, my wish list of 10 luxury goods and handbags that I'm hoping to own this year. I'd love to know what you have on your radar for your next investment piece. Do leave your comments below and I look forward to reading them. As always, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to check out my video. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll be back with another one soon.